Hello, I'm Mike Gordon. Welcome back to my perfect playthrough of Pokemon Gold and Silver for the Game Boy Color. Hey man, it's gonna be back here while I am uh, on game. Since I got yellow ready for my next uh, trades, I decided to move on to Gen 2. These are the Pokemon I caught in both games. And I decided, oh yeah, I'm gonna teach Quilava Dig. Should I also duplicate a number of items in my inventory? Off screen, of course. And while and while I'm getting silver ready, red is uh, gold is going to sorry. Silver is good teaching some new moves to Bayleaf and Quilava. So while gold is gonna go pick up the item finder from this guy. And I have to remind myself that I don't have to read the text with one game anymore, because this is gold and silver and I don't have to do that. Crystal is going to be the game where I do all the reading because gold, silver, crystal pretty much have this exact same storyline. Pretty much the difference is what's what uh, legendary Pokemon you can catch first. But even then, it, those captures are purely optional. I critique. Yeah, I already don't. So I I'm playing gold like I'm playing red and blue, where I have one game do the whole dialogue thing while the other does breezes through, and I don't have to do that. And I'll also have to remember that, oh yeah, I already got all the items via Item Finder. All the hidden items, anyways. So Silver's done setting up, but Silver's gonna head towards a different trajectory from Gold. Just head straight to the Kimono Girls. Don't worry, I'll get the Item Finder later. But there was a lot of dilly dally in gold, so obviously silver's gonna be able to make up the time difference. Croconaw, use water gun! That's literally the strategy here. Nyoko was defeated. And I just have to breeze through all this. The dialogue is the exact same. There's, the only difference between Gold, Silver, and Crystal is that Crystal has some extra bit of dialogue that wasn't in Gold or Silver version, but really it's just additional dialogue, not changed dialogue. This, in a way, actually kind of makes Gold, Silver, and Crystal the most identical set of three games in any generation of Pokemon. Especially since you can catch the mascot legendaries in all three games. Each of the ma- well, all three mascot legendaries in all three games, anyways. So, Bite Strats on Espeon and Rage Strats on, Umbre on Umbreon. Uh, Vaporeon and Jolteon. Jolteon we fight last to give Croconaw the best ch chances to succeed. Because, Jolte because if you're not careful, Jolteon will kill you. Croconaw, use Rage! So, how long am I going to be playing Gold or Silver? Well, I need a couple things. I need a, I need a, at least one rare candy, preferably more, and I also need a ton of Pokemon that I need to level, uh, evolve via level up. Actually, because of the issues with Pokedex entries being, the, being different in every game from now on, I'm probably going to put a ton more emphasis on evolving my Pokemon off screen so I can read their Pokedex entries later. Especially since the since the overall experience yield in 
Gold, silver, crystal is really, really bad. The experience distribution is really, really bad. So yeah, I'm just spamming rage here. And I also need to use a push on Crocodile Gold version. Silver's gonna also need a, a potion for Crocodile before we take on the last Kimono Girl. And also the most dangerous for Crocodile. Yep. Recover 18 HP. Crocodile use rage. And we keep using rage here. Girl Miki was defeated. Oh, you're good at this. And now we talk to this guy, and he and Silver gets a huge time save. Thanks to the double thunder shock. That resulted in a two shot against Jolteon. That's why I gave Krokona the quick claw so I could get get a first turn against a Pokemon that's faster. And after a careful thought consideration, I decided to just head south to Goldenrod. Yeah, I'm going to cut through National Park here. And I'm just going to keep on heading south. Now I will skip the two officers for now because I don't because I want to be sure to capture enough Pokemon to deal with the, these uh, trainers first. I went south so I could talk to this guy, the younger, less expensive of two haircut brothers, so I could get a high quality haircut to my Eevee. It's a new day, so he looks delighted. And this is going to help Eevee boost Eevee's affection right for me. And while Gold teleports back to Akrotik City, I'm actually going to teach use this opportunity to teach Crocodile Surf. Man, the routing in Silver version is so much better once I figure out what I have to do. This is how you can tell that I played Gold for version first. And I already did all this stuff at the beginning of my playthrough with Silver. That's the pause of all the items I don't need. That's also when I realized I could give Croconaut the Quick Claw. I should give Croconaut the Quick Claw in Gold version. Which I already did in Silver. But, I do pick up the Iron Fighter in Silver, which is something I didn't do during my initial trip. I deposit everything but the Blue Apricorn because I plan on selling that. I already have a Lure Ball, so I don't need it. So now Silver's way ahead, as I realize I should teach Dig to Quilava, too. 
Again, something I already did at the very beginning of the episode. In Silver, in Silver's case. And I totally forgot that cr that I already taught Headbutt to Quilava. Silly me. So Silver has a community lead over Gold because of the because of my dilly dallying. I have received comments like, why don't you just test these two to keep the gameplay in sync? The whole point of this isn't to keep the gameplay footage between the two games perfectly in sync. The purpose is to cover the same events over each episode over the course of the episode. It also shows how much one... and typically it shows how one game improves his, uh, performance over the other. Silver, or Jimmy, is so far ahead of, is so far ahead of Ethan at this point? That's ridiculous. Crocodile use bite. And Quilava and Silver's gonna use dig against the second trainer in this gym. And the reason why I'm using Quilava the second against the second trainer is because the second trainer is optional. Me meaning Croconaut doesn't have to fight him. Let's try and learn Surf. Can't learn more than two moves. Make room for Surf. Yeah, I'm gonna delete Water Gun. Why? Because Water Gun sucks. I'm gonna make Crocodile hold the Quick Claw now. Oh, anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Quilava should be the front. And, yep, Silver already defeated the second trainer while Gold needs to play catch up. And that's how you can tell what game ha has the music is playing in, is because that's typically the game that finishes last. Use Dig. And I'm glad that Croconaut got the flinch off the third trainer's haunter. So yeah, Quilava's just gonna keep spamming dig on these haunters until we wipe them out. Well, at least I one-shot the second haunter. That is so eerie, it's weird. So yeah, we are going to, uh... Sage Jeffrey. This little 22 haunter. Too bad it's not like Cur It's too bad the downside curse doesn't kick in when used on a Pokemon that dug a hole and then it just whiffs. That would have made the move even more busted. But whatever. Turning, using at manipulating a curse so it tur take turns a two shot until one shot is really cool. 
Too bad Morty's Ghastly is literally the only Pokemon of his that knows Curse. And it's an easy one-shot. Hunter used Nightshade. That's fine. So long as I'm not hypnosed or confused or paralyzed. I'm good. Chronicana use bite. And I'm making Gar flinch. No hypnosis, good. One more turn, please get Pryo. No. No quick claw, but I got it. No suspicious, which means Silver defeated Morty relatively easily. Well, we'll defeat Morty relatively easily. That's the best his second honor can do against us. That's funny. Just like that, Silver's defeated Morty, while well, Gold is halfway done with Morty. So yeah, that... Honestly, I don't mind the discrepancies in terms of synchronization, because there's a week Because all the Pokedex entries are dip are going to be different from one another. I do think it's a good thing that the two games actually have to cover slightly different content at their cover content at their own pace. So I can have time to read all the Pokedex entries. Ultra Ball to pick up? Good. Even though I could go through uh, a cave right now if I want to, I'm not going to. At least not yet. And I want to headbutt this tree in silver version. And this is going to give me an opportunity to cut. Yep. Our first set of headbutt encounters are going to be Heracross and Apom. And the ID for Pokemon Silver is ideal for catching Heracross and Apom off this tree specifically. And with our Master Balls, it comes super easily. Usually docile, but if disturbed while sipping um, honey, it chases off the intruder with its horn. Now, Gold does have to travel a little ways deeper in Route 42 before he could do the headbutt trees, but... Here's the second encounter in Silver. It is a pawn as well, and Gold also needs to teach Bayleaf Cut, which Silver already did. Meanwhile, Silver catches uh, Apom with the Master Ball. And because we have different IDs, Gold has to travel a little further. It lives atop tall trees. Leaping from branch to branch, it definitely uses its tail for balance. Yeah, quick look at the ID told me, okay, I need to head down here. Having all the apricorn off these trees, pink, green, and yellow. The green apricorn is by far the most useful out of them, however. And I need two of them. There's yellow, and this is the tree I need to farm my uh, two headbutt counters off of. Gold's first Pokemon is a Palm. Oh, 
come on. No, I'm not gonna battle you because I haven't updated your team yet. Alright, let's look at that. Its tail is so powerful that it can use it to grab a tree branch and hold itself up in the air. What I'm doing is screen buffering so the trainers don't lock up to me when I pass them. And Gold's gonna do something similar later. Anyways, we kept we run into hair across here. Unfortunately, the highest level Flaffy we can get is level 17, so we gotta put off capturing him for now. You can only capture a level 17 Flaffy on Route 42, which I forgot to do. But here's Giraffe Rig and Silver. This powerful Pokemon thrusts its prize horn under its enemies' bellies, then lifts and throws them. The nickname to Heracross? Yes, Bill's PC. A cell which also contains a small brain may bite on its own if it notices an alluring smell. So that's Girafferidge, a Pokemon that Crystal cannot catch because it's not available in Crystal. No fishing counters, so... And here's a new encounter here. It's Minky, which is exclusive to Gold version. Unfortunately, uh, Silver already caught Venonat, so we'll be skipping this capture. And Silver's gonna move on north, deeper into Lake of Rage, picking up all the hidden items. Meanwhile, it is extremely ill-tempered. Groups of them will attack any handy target for no reason. So that was a free uh, version exclusive. However, Minky's counter uh, version exclusive counterpart, Meowth, is not available on Route 42. So I will have to. So Silver's gonna have to catch that one later. Luckily. It's not like you have to wait a while before a uh, silver version will catch up to gold in terms of Pokedex completion. Meowth can be caught on on Route 38, on Routes 38 and 39, which is to the west, uh, which is west of Ecrate, which are which are both west of Ecrateque. So while Silver explores the maze picking up all of the items, it still has a small brain of its own. Beware, if you get close, it may react to your scent and bite. So yeah, Gold is catching up to Silver, but Gold is not going to be able to finish before Silver. I uh, have to talk to Wesley because I still have to talk to Wesley of Wednesdays before the day gives way to Thursday in its stead. And it's 11 and it's almost midnight. So once the clock strikes midnight, Wesley will disappear. But Gold will catch the last Pokemon while Silver will get TM10 which is Hidden Power. Hidden power based on your uh, Pokemon's DVs and IVs will change its typing based on that, on those characteristics, among other things. Its eyes are specially adapted. They concentrate even faint light and enable it to see in the dark. Silver still needs to catch a uh, Noctile, however, so. Silver's not quite done yet, even though Silver's cleared out the maze. Well, all but one item. You have to wait till the very next day before Silver, Gold or Silver can nab that last item in the maze. The reason why we can't grab that last item in the maze is because, uh... It's actually because, uh, 
Wesley of Wednesday is literally standing on top of its spot. So we can't go pick it up or anything like that. So it's five minutes till, which means Silver's going to have to use Sweet Scent to try to lure out Noctile. There it is. Good. Too bad neither game caught a shiny Noctile. Then we would be like the anime. Regardless, Master Ball go. Alright, we caught Noctile. When it needs to think, it rotates its head 180 degrees to sharpen its intellectual power. And that's all the captures for today's episode. Uh, Silver still needs to catch a Meowth to match uh, Gold's 38, but that can be done in the next episode or two. Meanwhile, Silver's gonna wait for Gold on Gold in the meantime, and wait for Gold to finish. There isn't that much time left in this episode, so there's not a whole lot of time to wait. Oh, that's cool. But now I have... I have to... Now Gold needs to make his way out of the maze. And believe it or not, this is when I decided that this would be a good place to stop. Even though we are just a couple minutes away from midnight, which means we can re-enter Lake of Rage and nab this final item that we need to pick up. I'm gonna end it here. I can literally pick it up in the next episode. No problem. And right here, I'm gonna stop. It's not the same spot as in Silver, but it's good enough. Next time, we're grabbing the last item and talking to the Red Gyarados. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Really appreciate it. Mike Gorn, sign out.